Hello, we're going to continue with the last part of our calculating trust forces um, video. And so today what we're going to look at is really kind of how we uh, go through that process. So the last video, we were looking at kind of your setup and how do you find the reaction forces and uh, setting up all your angles and finding those uh, to get your free body diagram complete. And so this is what you're going to do. Once you have your free body diagram complete, you know all the angles, you know all the uh, dimensions that you need and you've done those moment calculations and the uh, equilibrium calculations to find your reaction forces, the, the forces that are holding up the bridge at either end, then what we want to do is what's called the method of joints. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And that is how we're going to um, really get through calculating the, the force acting on each truss. And so we're going to kind of walk through that process today. All right, so here's what we want to do first. And so if you remember, we had a bridge truss that had five members. We had a A, B, B, C, uh, C, D, B, D, and, and A, D. So it's, it's like a pretty simple bridge. It's a couple of triangles, not a, not a huge thing. And we had a force at D that was 500 pounds, and we went and calculated REX, REY, and RCY in the last video. And then we also calculated those two angles, the 53.13 degrees and the 29.745. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to split this up into each of these vertices or, or joints, as they're calling it. So they say the method of joints, what they're really talking about is we're going to isolate each uh, vertex, each, each joint, each place where the beams come together and are joined together, and draw the free body diagram for each of those points. And so that's what they've done here. They're basically just cutting through each of those beams and making them uh, two separate force vectors. And so you can see on AB, that beam that was here is represented by a vector from A pointing towards B and then one from B pointing towards A. And we talked about earlier uh, in the previous video that uh, one of the assumptions we're making is that all of our forces are in tension. And so that's what we're doing here. We're saying this is going to be in tension. And so because it's in tension, we're going to draw it towards the other uh, vertex. That's just our, our convention. And so if we're wrong, We'll, we'll deal with that. But if we're wrong, that means we're going to point it the opposite direction. And we'll know if we're wrong if we get a negative answer. So when we work out and we find what that force is from on A, B here, we'll know if we got that the wrong direction by uh, if our answer comes up negative. Okay. So we're assuming everything's in tension. We've drawn in the free body diagram for each. And again, all we're really doing is just taking our picture and we're just breaking each of those beams into like two parts and, and drawing in the arrows. And we're not too worried necessarily yet about the length of these. We don't know how big those forces are. So we're just kind of drawing an arrow to show what it is. So again, that's kind of our starting point. And we're going to work our way through each of these smaller pieces. So we've got one, two, three, four pieces that we have to look at. Uh, we may find that we don't need to look at all four, but we're, we're just going to work our way around until we get through all of the, the parts that we need to, to be able to um, find the total uh, force on each of the beams. So once we find all five beams, we can stop. Uh, and so we may need all four vertices. We may not, We're, but that's what we need to know. We need to know what are the forces in each part. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick one of these. And I think we're going to start here at A. And really, you can start wherever you want, but you definitely want to start somewhere where you know some information. So uh, in this case, a or C are going to be our best bets because we actually know something about those because we already know these reaction forces. They don't have them written in here, but we calculated those uh, previously. And so we know what those values are. So that gives us a starting point that we, we didn't have before. So that's why we're going to go ahead and um, pick one of those two points. But we could definitely pick really any point. It's just going to be, you know, if I pick a point that we don't know much information, we're going to get to a, a spot where we're just kind of stuck. And so we're going to not have enough information to continue on uh, from there because we will have too many unknowns. All right. So this is what we calculated last time. We had a 350 pound load here at A. That was our reaction force there. And we found that the X component there was zero because there was no other forces acting horizontally on the, the bridge as a whole. And so that reaction force at AX is going to end up being zero. And so we'll, we'll go ahead and write the zero in there and you could put the arrow in, but it's going to be zero. And then over here at C, we had 150 pound reaction force. So that's, that's what we know. This is what we know right now. 
And so when we start looking at, um, again, picking our starting points, we want to pick some place where we know some information. So again, that's why we're going to pick one of those two endpoints. Okay, so we're going to start with A. And so we have our reaction force here in the y direction. Again, the a, x direction is technically there, but it's zero, so we're, we're going to leave it out of the picture for right now. Um, but we do have this 350 pound force here, and we know that it's going upwards. That one's for sure. And so what we have then is two other vectors, A, B, and A, D. And so A, D is horizontal, so that one's really nice. We don't have to do anything with it other than just represent it there. But A, B is our problem because A, B is going off at an angle, and it's this 53.13 degree angle. And that does not line up with any of the other two forces we've got working with. So this is going to be our process through everything. If it is not going vertical or horizontal, we need to break it up into components that are going those two directions. So our, our first order of business here is to take AB and split it into its X and Y components. So that's what we're going to do because uh, we know uh, that some of the forces in the Y have to add to zero. We know that some of the forces in the X have to add to zero. We're not going to worry about moment calculations with this because we won't need them. Uh, so everything we're going to do right now is going to be either the sum of the forces in the Y direction add to zero or the sum of forces in the uh, X direction add to zero are actually going to be probably both, both of those two conditions. So if we're looking at our sum of the forces in the Y direction, we have RAY, which is our reaction force. That's the 350 pounds. And then we have the Y component of AB. That's what they're saying here, the AB, Y component of the, the force AB which we are going to have drawn in if we draw in this vector component because it is pointing up and to the right. We have it drawn so that it should be going up and then our X is going to go to the right. So when we write that in, that's what we're going to look at. So RAY plus ABY, we know they should add to zero. And hopefully you're saying, okay, well, that doesn't make sense. And you're correct. It, would, it doesn't because both of these forces are going up and if they both go up, they can't be both positive because you know that would make they won't add to zero that way um, so we know the 350 is correct that means the way we have this drawn is actually wrong it's actually backwards uh, we'll, we'll deal with that in a minute but don't worry about it yet okay so to find our forces we know this one was 350 and they're leaving out uh, all the intermediate steps here but we are going to look at how do you find the y component of this so if i drew in my triangle i would have the x going this way and my y is going up the y side is the opposite side to my angle and so i would be using sine because the y is the opposite and so i'm going to get a b times sine of that angle that is going to be the y component we don't know what a b is that's what we're trying to figure out but we do know that uh, the y component of that is going to be a b times sine of that angle and if you need to go back and review kind of why that is, we can you can go back and look at some of those old, older videos. Uh, but that's what you're going to have. And so now what we can do is we can solve this equation for A, B, because we know everything there is to know about uh, this equation except for A, B. We've got you know no other variables. And so for us to solve that, we'll subtract 350 from both sides. Go ahead and divide by sine of 53.13, and we'll get a answer. And our answer is going to be negative. It's negative 438 pounds. Now, what does that tell us? Uh, the negative means that we assumed it was in tension, and that's just our starting uh, assumption that we're going to make, is that everything's in tension. And that's not a good assumption. We know it's not going to be true, but it's just to help us kind of be consistent and have a plan. Uh, but in this case, if it comes up negative, that means we were wrong. The number's fine, but we just have it going the wrong direction. So we thought it should be going up. Turns out it's actually going to be going down. So, so we have 438 pounds of force, but it's not going that way. It's actually going to be going the other way. So it's actually in compression. We thought it was intention. It's actually going to be in compression. Uh, one thing that you're going to find for most truss bridges, if it's a above road truss, is that the arc, the top part of it, is going to almost always be in compression. Uh, and the, the road bed will almost always be in tension. So that's kind of a good check. You know, if the, this is part of that arc, the top part of the, the road uh, truss bridge, that part should probably be in compression, and unless we have some weird loading or, or something like that. But if it's above the, the roadway, it should be compression. 
So anyway, that's going to be our value for AB, and it is again the opposite direction. So what we'll do is we'll switch the direction. So now our arrow is going that way, um, but that's okay. That's good. We we're just kind of updating as we go, and so that was our force. And it's actually apparently four thirty three four thirty seven point five, not four thirty eight, but rounding is okay. I mean, we want to not round too much. We want to kind of keep those intermediate values until we you know find our final answers, but you know, eventually you'll, you'll round off. Okay, so that tells us what AB is. Now we need to find AD. So we're going to come back and do the same thing, except AD is in the X direction. So we're going to use the X component to find it. So we'll go back when you're know, going to update our picture here. Um, a lot of times you're going to go ahead and draw it out that way. I mean, you can draw the head coming into the point, but it's kind of hard to see it sometimes. So they'll draw it this way just to clean that up. One thing you do need to be careful with is if I switch it here, that means this one also needs to be switched. So we're going to switch that one as well uh, to be the correct direction. That way, when we get to part B up here, if we need this one, um, we'll have that go in the right direction. Otherwise, things are going to get confused. Um, so we want to make sure we're updating everywhere that that happens. So if A, B is correct here, we need to make sure it's correct here. Okay, so now we're going to back and look at AD. So AD, again, is the horizontal side. And so that would be the adjacent side to this angle that we're looking at. So when we do AB, we know we now know what AB is. We're going to have to find its X component because we have two forces going in the X direction. We have AD, and then we have the X component of AB. And so when we look at our sum of forces in the X direction, there's two of them. And so we have AD. And now that we've corrected that, and we know it's going the other way, that means now this is pointing to the left and down. And if it's going left, that makes it negative. So we're going to go ahead and correct and make that negative here because it should be. And so that means that we're going to get negative of AB, so negative of that 437.5, times cosine of that angle, plus AD. So again, this is the X component, and we just did our trig. You know, it's to find the X component, it's the force times cosine of the angle, because again, the X side is the adjacent side. And we're going to solve for AD, which is going to be pretty easy, because all we got to do is just add this over. Uh, so we'll find that value, and so AD is whatever that 437.5 times cosine of 53.13 is, and that comes out to 262.5. This one's positive, and so the fact that it's positive is telling us that we guessed correctly. So when we said it was going to be intention, that was correct. We drew it the right way, so we don't have to switch the direction. It actually is intention like we thought it was. Uh, so that's good for us. So now we've got two out of our five. So again, it's thinking of this as a, a problem, we're kind of breaking it up into small pieces. We had five beams to try to find forces in. We found the force in two of them. So we know that AB has 437.5 pounds of force on it in compression, and AD has 262.5 pounds of force in tension. And that is, again, two out of the five that we needed. So now we, we've done everything we can with A, so we're going to go ahead and move to a different point. Uh, we'll update our picture. Uh, but now we're going to pick a different point. So we're going to go to the other one we know something about, which is the other uh, support point, uh, C, which is the other, other end of the bridge, because we happen to know this force right there. And we're going to do the same process. So you're going to find it's very repetitive. We're going to do the same process over and over again. So in this case, we're going to look at um, the, some of the forces in the X and some of the forces in the Y. Uh, the order is a little bit important uh, if you don't know enough yet. So in this case, since we know something about Y, we know the 150 pounds, we're probably going to do the Y first instead of the X. And we'll do set X second. So we're going to look at the sum of the forces in the Y, which is going to be this 150 pounds, which is our reaction force at C, and the Y component of BC. So whatever that Y component is, that's what we want to look at. And so we know this one, that's 150. This one, we don't know what its value is, but it's going to be whatever the force is times. And so again, the Y component, if we drew the triangle here, the Y component would be the opposite side, opposite of our angle. And so since it's the opposite side, we're going to use sine again. And so we would get uh, BC times sine of 29.745. So we're going to get 150 plus BC sine of 29.745. And then we're just doing a little bit of algebra. So we're going to subtract 150 from both sides. And then we'll divide by that sine value, whatever that number is. We'll put it in the calculator and divide. And again, we're going to get a negative answer. And again, that hopefully is not surprising. We just talked about that a minute ago. 
Uh, it's coming up negative because, again, we assumed it was in tension, but it is the top part of the arc of our, our truss bridge. And again, those for truss bridges, those are almost always in compression. And like I said, unless you have some really weird loading or something, uh, they almost always in compression. And so this should not be too shocking that uh, this is negative. It means it's actually in compression. So we'll have to fix our picture. So we know this is going the wrong direction. So the arrow should be going towards C instead of away from C. So we'll fix that picture. And that means we also need to fix our picture here. So we'll correct here. So that one needs to be going that way. And that one needs to be going that way. So now we've got this picture that we're working with right now correct, but we also have updated B. So again, if we get to B, if we need it, we may not need it, but if we need it, we'll have it correct. All right. And we'll come back here to C. Let's find our other other part for that one. So we found that one. Now we're going to use the X component, the X direction. And we know our sum of the forces the X should add to zero. And so that's going to be CD, which is going left. So that's a negative because it's going to the left. And then we need to have then the um, X component of this. Now this one is going to the right. And so you got to pay attention to the direction of the arrows. This one's going down and to the right. So uh, that means this one is going to be the positive one. CD is negative. So we're going to do our value. We're going to have the X component of BC is positive. CD is negative because it's going to the left. And then to find this, that is the X component is going to be along this side. And so we're going to get um, the cosine. So we're going to do BC times cosine of the angle. So 302.33 times cosine of the angle minus CD. And again, we don't know what CD is yet. That's what we're looking for. But it's going to be that force times cosine of the angle. That's the X component of BC plus CD. And again, CD is left, so it's plus a negative. So it's minus equals zero. So that means CD equals whatever that comes out to be. And you'll plug it in your calculator, find that value. And so in this case, it's 262.5. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, hopefully that number looks familiar. And that was intention because we came up positive. If it comes up positive, that means, again, our picture is drawn correctly. So CD is going the correct way. And so that was drawn correctly to go that direction. So it is also intention. And so now we're, we're doing pretty good because we had five things to find. We found four of them. So we, we know four out of the five. And so the only thing we have left is to find that vertical piece. And so you can choose point B or point D. And we're going to go to point D because it's the easier one here. Uh, all we really need to know is this value. We actually know both of these because uh, we've already found AD. We've already found uh, CD. So we don't need to find those. And we hopefully noticed they were the same. And that should be the case because if we look at point D, there's only two forces in the X direction. They ought to be the same opposite directions, but equal in magnitude. And so hopefully that makes sense. AD and uh, CD in this case were equal. Uh, again, it's not always going to be that way, but in this case, because those are the only forces in the X, that's what happens. Uh, and so I, I'm talking around it, but I think we'll figure out pretty quickly what should BD equal. Well, I only have two forces in the Y direction. They have to add to zero. And so BD plus this negative 500, this 500 pounds going down, need to add to zero. So we'll do the sum of the forces in the Y. BD minus that force at D, which is that 500 pounds, has to equal zero. Well, that's pretty easy math. So BD minus 500 equals zero. That means BD would have to be 500 pounds. So that would be our last one. Now it's positive, and so what did we say earlier? We said we're assuming everything's tension. That's the way we're drawing it away from the vertex is tension. So that means this one is 500 pounds in tension. So we're pulling on the the, the beam. So uh, it came up a positive value. That means our attention guess was correct. So we had three in tension, two in compression, the two on top were compression, the three uh, bottom ones, the two horizontal ones and the, the one vertical one are all in tension. And that is what we wanted to do. So that is kind of the process that we're going to go through. Uh, it really just depends on how many um, pieces you have as to how hard that gets. But the process is always what we just looked at. You're going to draw the free by diagram, split up your uh, forces into their components, add all the forces in the X and the Y 
And the order you do that in kind of depends on what you know. Uh, generally, we're going to probably start with Y just because you happen to know the Y component most of the time with those two reaction forces that the, um, the bridge supports. So we're probably going to do Y first and then do the X. But you're just trying to find the force in each of those uh, bridge beams. And so you're going to have to do as many steps as it takes to find all those forces. So for us, we had to do um, five of them. So we did two for each of the ends, and then we were able to get the last one by looking at point D. Uh, it just kind of depends on the, the bridge stress you have as to how long that's going to take. But that is the process. And again, it, it's very repetitive. It's a little tedious. Uh, you just have to be careful with your numbers as you go through. But that's what we're, we're looking at. All right. Thank you very much.